Hello, and welcome back to Drams for Dummies. I am the numero uno dummy, Brett. I know nothing, but neither do most of us, which is what this channel is for, is for guys and gals and folks of all persuasions who just love the whiskeys and the bourbons, don't really know what we're doing with it. We just know we like it, and we enjoy learning more about it. We enjoy uh, trying new things. And uh, yeah, that's why we're here, and that's why I'm here, and that's why you're watching, and I appreciate you. And if you like the idea of uh, having someone coming into someone's kitchen and sharing bottles with them and hearing what they had to say in, in a way that kind of speaks your language, does it doesn't have the, the best palate in the world, isn't the world's top anything, <laughs> or even the, the, the area's best anything, or the neighborhood's best anything, but just likes doing the bourbon whiskey thing, then like, subscribe, share with all your other dummy whiskey friends, and uh, if you're really into this and you really want to see it go, and consider being a patron uh, by going to our Patreon at Drams for Dummies. Maybe there'll be some graphics here. Depends on how um, lazy I am and how and and if I get those up or not. So, real quick, we're just gonna hit this bottle. Um, a lot of you maybe have, have, if you've been around the whiskey game any amount of time, you've probably for sure know and have heard of George Dickel, and you've probably, I'm guessing, also heard some of the divisive opinions about George Dickel. It sort of gets the, it's, it, one, the, the name is hilarious. Speaking of, of Dickels, uh, my music today, of course, is inspired by the bottle. I just put Dick into um, uh, the search for Spotify. First thing that popped up was Dick Dale. And if you know Dick Dale, the, the, the surf punk rock uh, king, uh, it's a perfect, I mean, it's just a great uh, uh, music to jam out to today on this warm uh, spring day as we drink some bourbon together. But Dickel is divisive as, I mean, anyone knows that uh, when we're talking about any kind of Dickel, no matter what kind of Dickel we're talking about, it's divisive. I mean, come on. It's, a, it's an acquired taste, as some would say, and some never acquire it. And uh, we'll leave that right there. But... 100% honest for, with you, I've never had any George Dickel. Now, there's always the, you, you know, you're drinking something that's sourced, you know, from an NDP, and, you know, it, do they use some George Dickel product in there? So I, I, I'm sh I'm sure, like all of us, I've had a little Dickel, and, it, it, you know, sometimes just accidentally, didn't even know I was having it. Um, but I've never consciously bought a George Dickel bottle, and I've always thought I've got to pull the trigger. I got to pull the trigger, and they're so reasonably priced. I'm like, well, I just get a bottle someday. But for some reason, when you're shopping for the cheap bottles, you have your go-to's, the ones you're gonna put is in your mixers, and to go get another bottle, you're like, ah, especially when it's divisive, and you've and you've heard mixed opinions about it. Um, but this guy right here, bottled and bond. 13 years, so 100 proof, 13 year old for, a, a, I think it's the MSRP is a, like 45 bucks, but you typically find it cheaper on the shelves. I think it might have been 39, 36 maybe, ye old bubbles for me the other day. And I'm just like, that's, that's insane. If you go off of just the, the 10 per year, well, that'd be a $130 bottle. So you're whatever 3x under that or whatever you know so for value i just don't think you can get better and it's a cool looking bottle it's got it's got a cool story it's got a lot of history and it's got a, an avid group of followers that are that are that are into the brand so right now what's your experience with dickel uh are you a, are you are you are you are you really into dickel are you, are you are you a big dickel fan you like dickel any way you can get it you know a little little dickel tickle um, or are you uh, very anti dickel and, 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 and so why? It, it, it just is it, the, is it the name? Is it what you've heard or have you experienced it? You know, so people talk about that it's got some unique notes, some unique things. As you know, I'm terrible at all the notes, so I don't know if I'm going to pull the unique note. Uh, but I, don't really, I didn't go back and reread reviews to see what I'm supposed to be, you know, 
smelling and tasting for. We're just going to do this together. I'm hugely excited to, to do this with you guys. I, I'm excited to try this bottle. So having said that, let's rock and roll. Just on a glance, it's super light for a 13 year. All right, go Dick. Play that magic surf guitar of yours. <laughs> Here we go. So the mash bill of, of the George Dickel product, or at least this one, high, high corn. It's like 80... Six, four, what would it be? 84% corn, 86% corn, and then it's... Well, do the math, Brett. It's 84% corn, and then it's 8% malted barley and 8% rye. So this is... High corn, low rye, um, which hearing that would make me think it's going to be a real kind of um, smooth and sweet more than anything. Um, but that first, the nose comes off. It's it's super sweet. It's punchy. It comes off almost rye-like. It feels like it's a higher rye than it is. It, it's a, it's a, it's an ethanol uh, 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 booger. It's only 100 proof, but it smells hotter. It's fun, though. Again, I, I, I've talked about this recently on some reviews. This strikes me as that punchy, warm weather kind of bourbon. You know, it's gonna, it's living up in the higher, higher levels and the, the fruitier, spicier, zippier <laughs> worlds versus the deep, rich, um, you know, caramels and molasses and chocolates or whatever. I like that nose a lot, though. I feel like <clears throat> if you like the kind of, I'm usually the deeper nose guy, but if, but for a higher, for a, a punchier upper level, upper chart nose versus the lower, you know, foundational, uh, richer ones, those punchier noses, I think this is doing it really well. And again, I wish I could tell you, oh, see, because people can smell it and they'll go, that's, but maybe it's they're tasting it. One, it's either in the nose or in the palate. People are like, that's a dickle, that's a dickle, 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 dickle. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I can kind of see that there's that Tennessee connection. It kind of has that Jack Daniels y quality to it. Now, let me go ahead and give another little, get a little taste here. Let's see what's going on. The, the, the palate isn't as punchy as the nose. The palate is pretty smooth and, 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 and easy drinking. You know, 100 proof. I think that high corn is coming out in the palate where it's just a nice kind of solid, not super complex palate. The finish on first blush is a little harsh. A little uh, medicinal, minerally something that I'm not loving in the finish. It's got a good ride on it. It's got that good, like I said, Tennessee hug. We're calling that. Um, but let me get some scores here real quick. So, nose. I like it. Uh, it there's, there is a lot of baking spice in the nose. There's a little cherry. Uh, let me, uh, there's, uh, mm, there's some different fruits in there. It is a fruity, spicy, zippy nose. But there's oak in there too from the 13 years. I like that a lot. That is a really good nose. Now, I'm going to go with my solid, my normal eight. That is uh, better than average, better than good. Oh, I mean, we're, we're right up on a great nose. I, I would put it there. The palate is way richer than the nose. So we have some different things happening. Maybe a bitter chocolate. Kind of that dark, 
dark bitter chocolate level. Like it's chocolatey, it's rich, but it's still got a little bit of that bitterness, that punchiness that comes from the nose. As it's in the palate and you're kind of rolling it around, you haven't done, you haven't done anything with it yet. It, it starts to kind of light some things up, but then it, but then as you start to actually, you know, swallow it and bring it out, bring it down, the palate itself, it's got a viscous quality. It fills the mouth. It's rich. It's nice. It's smooth. It's easy to drink. And as it hits kind of that back palate and then starts to go into more of a finish is when it kind of just goes, ugh, it kind of gets a little bit mm, on the back. And then it kind of just sort of, the, the feeling of it runs. But the flavor of it sort of goes and then disappears. So the fa the flavor and the finish is not great for me. There's a couple of things that pop in the palate, like it's like it's this rich, chocolatey sort of easy. But then all of a sudden, a boop, a little bit of that fruit that's in the nose comes back in the palate. It, it's like a little different each time, which I think is fun. Um, if we're thinking that six is above average to good and seven is good heading towards great, I'm going to put this as a 6.5 on the palate because it is, it's pretty darn good, right? It's not meh average and it's not just, eh, it's pretty all right. It's, it's pretty darn good, but it's not quite good good <laughs> and then the finish i think it's going to fall from that i'm taking the palette to a six i'm gonna finish five average av average maybe almost a little below average uh, average yeah so this is one that Again, everyone's got their priorities. Jason C. in the mash and drum, right? He's finish. Finish first. Finish, finish, finish. Then we go from there. Every, and then I'm sure a ton of people are palate. What's it taste like? I mean, the nose and the finish can be whatever. I am I think I'm, no, I'm in order. Nose, palate, finish. I want on a fantastic nose. But then I want the palate to, to, to be really strong too and to follow it and, and, and hold up. So here we have the... We smell really good, and we could just take all day smelling it and never drink it. We have that eight nose. But then we get a little bit let down, a little bit, not terribly, but it's, nah, pretty darn good palate. And then it just kind of keeps going. It's like it's, so we sort of, it's, it's like we start up here on the old roller coaster, and it just kind of goes, yeah, it's pretty fun, it's pretty, and we're done. It just kind of just, and levels, and goes out. As opposed to, it's really good, and it goes, oh, but it zips back up, and then it goes, and it twists, and it turns. No, it just kind of, it's kind of, it's fairly simple. It's fairly straightforward. Um, so what's that going to be? That's going to be a six point something, maybe, total? It is a 6.3. 6 6.3. A 6.3 for a $35 bottle. Now you start to go, you, you, you know, you have to start kind of doing the math a little bit, right? I, I, I feel like, I feel like we go to, it's a cool bottle. It's got a lot of history. It's a 13 year product. It's a high, really super high corn, which is kind of unique. Uh, not everyone's had the Dickel. And, you know, you always want to be the first to introduce people to, to fun things like Dickels. Um, so, thirty-five dollars. I mean, why the hell not? If you haven't had it, this is definitely not a don't buy it. This would be a go buy it. I mean, it's thirty-five freaking dollars in this bourbon market—that's like free. <laughs> so, I would say get it. See if it hits your palate. Let me know what you think. Um, but you know, for me personally, you know, at this particular moment on the first neck pour of this dude. When I'm, it's gonna end up in cocktails at some point. Um, if I run out of my Evan Williams Black, it might end up in in, in bourbon and cokes because that's what happens sometimes. Am I gonna pour it? Am I gonna consciously think to myself, I want a nice straight pour? I'm gonna pour. I'm gonna pour me that Dickel. Probably not. Not a six point three year. That's a mixer to me. 
It's a mixer, and at $35, when I can get Evan Williams Black, that's close-ish in score for, you know, $22 for a liter and a half. So, I mean, my I'm not, long story short, I'm not going to be buy. I wouldn't buy it again. But I'm so glad I bought it, and I'm so glad I have it. It's going to last a while on the shelf. It's a good one. Go check it out. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for being here for my, um, I mean, my first Dickel bourbon experience. You know, I'm not going to really go into all my Dickel's experience. Sometimes we don't even know when we're getting the Dickel. Just, we're just getting the Dickel. And, um, but thank you for that. And let me know what you guys think. Subscribe, like, share with your friends. Think about being a patron. I love you guys. I love what you're doing. Whatever you're doing, man, you only get one life. Just do what you want to do, as long as you're not hurting anybody. And as I, the love from me will come its greatest point if you are subscribed, if you are sharing it with your friends, if you're a patron. If you're not doing those things, but you got all the way to the end, and you come back and watch some other stuff, I, I like you a lot. But my love is reserved for the people who are uh, supporting this dumb thing that we're doing here. Thank you, guys. See you next time.